So the recent California fires are very strange and suspect, to say the least. We have specific areas being burned, like energy was being directed at certain things. In drone footage of the aftermath, we see houses completely obliterated and turned to ash while the surrounding landscapes and trees are totally fine. Here is a clip courtesy of Serbian Conspiracy, I'll put a link in the description. You'll notice here that stores and restaurants are wiped out while other things are still in perfect shape. Other buildings are fine, trees are untouched, but specific structures are just devastated. You gotta ask yourself, what's up with that? How did the fires get to these certain buildings but the surrounding areas, including the parking lot, look normal? Is this the result of direct energy weapons? Ranged weapons that inflict damage on a target by emitting highly focused energy? The answer is most likely yes. But most people believe that these kind of weapons are just science fiction, due to movies like Austin Powers, for instance. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin phase two of our evil project. Or is it phase th I don't know phases. Anyways, this is the phase in which we put a giant laser on the moon. As you know, the moon rotates around the Earth like so. When the moon reaches its appropriate lunar alignment, it will destroy Washington, D.C. Anyways, the key to this plan is the giant laser. But in reality, these direct energy weapons are admitted to be real and are documented. Scientists have been working on this top secret project since 1974. This laser is capable of unleashing the power of the sun. Enough energy to light up every home in the US or wipe out mankind. What we can do is focus this very high energy into a very small spot for a very short time. And when that happens, we get the conditions that are very much like inside our sun. So you hear that? Now let's watch a clip from YouTube channel In Truth by Grace. Link will be in the description, of course. This is not a carbon fire. This is the only fire in the whole wide world that's considered a forest fire where the forest did not burn. The forest didn't burn here. All the glass melted. All the, all the structural materials that used to be a house have disappeared they're, they have disappeared. You have a couple of bent poles here, a couple of, um, of, of poles that are bent, but you have absolutely no materials. The houses have not fallen. The houses have disappeared. The materials of, of these contents of these houses are gone. Let's listen to what they have to say here. She's going to talk a little bit about it. Well, first, let's go here. I want to show you where these fires are, because if you're like me, you didn't know that there were 14 separate fires. How did 14 separate fires start over such a wide area? You guys, this isn't normal. This is not how it, how it works. These homes didn't fall. These homes didn't burn. These homes disappeared. There's nothing left. There's not even a toilet bowl or a bathtub. This is one of the cars or trucks or something that was in this fire and you'll notice that the glass here, which has a melting point of between 2,600 and 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? We're talking forge, foundry, furnace temperatures to melt this glass. Glass does not melt on its own, guys. Open air fires do not create this kind of, this kind of complete combustion of the materials, all right? How do they create a laser with such devastating force? by assembling an array of 192 lasers and aiming them at a single hydrogen pellet the size of a BB. These 192 lasers are linked together by a twisting jungle of tubes that snake through this mammoth 10-story structure, which is the length of three football fields. The plan is to fire all 192 laser beams at once. Each beam starts out low-powered, about the size of what's inside your DVD player. 
But as they pass through the complex maze of tubes, they merge into one super beam. The super beam fires 500 terawatts of power in two billionths of a second, roughly 500 times the entire peak power output of the United States. When that light strikes the hydrogen pellet, it cooks it to over 800 million degrees. The fact is, we are dealing with microwave weapon technology. How else would this tree catch on fire from the inside? A haunting but mesmerizing scene from the wildfires in Sonoma County. A man came across this tree burning from the inside out. Matthew McDermott was driving around looking for escape routes as multiple fires closed in on the area he was in. The tree appears that to be hollowed out by embers and flames. Right, you could look this up. This is all over the news. Tree on fire from the inside. The only time that happens is when trees are struck by lightning which in itself is a direct energy, right? This whole thing is all messed up. Hurricane after hurricane, which are also able to be created and controlled by man. And now this? And right on cue, we have the Geostorm movie coming out, which has some truth in it. We can control our weather. But it's mostly outer space reinforcement propaganda. The Senate committee will now hear from Jacob Lawson, Climate ISS Chief Coordinator. May the record reflect that he was nearly one hour late. Yeah, sorry about that. I literally had to fly in from outer space. <laughs> Are all these things a distraction from the Vegas incident? Probably. These days, everything seems to be a distraction from something else. Anyway, I'll put some links for other channels that do a great job at covering these things. Check out In Truth by Grace, aplaintruth.info, my man Richie from Boston, of course, Leak Project, and yeah, there are many others. Salute to all the truth seekers, despite some of our differences. Stay vigilant and keep at it. Much love from ODD TV. I'm gone.